You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 209 of Teach Better Talk. And just so you all know, I did say the wrong number before taking this take, so I know for sure it is episode 209. My name is Ray Hewart, and as always, I am with my, well, frankly, unbearable co-host, <laughs> Mr. Jeff Gargas. Hi, I Jeff. Was, I, hi, Ray. I wasn't going to say anything. I, I was going to let you have it. You said 129, but I know you had, you've been... You've worked hard today, so it's late. It's already late, and we're just getting started for the night. So, like, it's perfectly okay that you accidentally said one. You said one twenty nine. I'm like, you were just, what? What are you talking about? One twenty nine. Exactly. You were already in my head, Jeff. I knew that if I didn't pick on myself, you were gonna come at me for it. And I was like, all right. But I totally did before the episode started. I'm looking at the number two hundred nine, and I'm like, we're in episode like one oh one, right? And you're like, what? <laughs> What do you, Ray? We're on like two hundred something. I'm like, oh yeah, sorry. I don't, I don't know. I was looking at it. I swear. You know when it, you know when you're looking at something and it comes out of your mouth, and you're like, that's not what my eyes told me to say. Yeah, I do it all the time. Um, I, I also appreciate you throwing unbearable back in my face because before we recorded this episode with Bruce, you were we were having some mic issues and you were checking and you're like, do I sound okay? And I'm like, you sound as unbearable as always, and you're like. Word. That's uh, the word. I love it. This was a fun episode, good episode. Uh, but before we get into it, I thought we'd do something fun. Because okay. I know we love when we do this, but let's highlight someone in our network. And I Can pick I pick r- who? And I want to give you the time limit. Are you ready? <laughs> sure. Go. Yeah. All right. That's all right. fun. Fun little twist. Well, well, Jeff Gargas, in three seconds or less, can you... <laughs> That's what you always do to me. <laughs> in um, 18 and a half seconds or less. In 36 okay, characters. Exactly. In 60 seconds or less, or maybe a little more because this person's so awesome, can you please highlight the amazing drum roll, please? You better imp- yeah, you better put in a drum roll Chris, right now. Chris, put in definitely. a drum roll. Yeah, Chris. Chris. Chris and I have talked about this, and he's supposed to listen for when we. I told him I'm like, I, this is hilarious because I literally told him the other day I'm like, I don't know when we're gonna get there, but at some point Ray and I are gonna get to the point where we feel so confident we'll be like, hey Chris, put a drum roll in. I think I yep. use drum roll because normally you do your drum roll, which is hilarious. It's it almost <laughs> as good. <laughs> it's it's almost as good as your like reverse noise because that's entertaining too. Um, wow. So Chris, drum roll right now. And are we keeping yelling out Chris in the episode? Yes, keep because that then we all should explain. There. Chris, keep the, keep Chris the, is our podcast editor. He's like the coolest guy ever. So we love you, Chris. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Here we go. Da, da, da. Amanda Post. It was that was such a good build up for Amanda. I hope Amanda appreciates that. Wow. Um sixty seconds is tough. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, uh, the Amanda, time started like twenty seconds okay, ago, buddy. Amanda Come Post. On. She's at Amanda Post one five one three. That's her thing. Um, I don't know what the 15th, I don't know how I remember that, but I don't know what it's for. I think it's a classroom. Anyway, she is a Teach Better ambassador. She's a blogger. She blogs with us. Uh, she was a speaker at, our, at the very first, uh, which was 2019 Teach Better conference. And she is an absolute all-star, rock star, whatever awesome name you could think of, second grade educator who runs the grid method better than Chad Ostrowski ever dreamt he could run it. And that is the truth. And he will back me up on that. Uh, she is just awesome. She has become such a big part of our, of our network and of our, just our family. Um, and I mean, so much that we call on her all the time to, to help if we have uh, elementary teachers that need to see the visual, you know, pieces of the, the grid method and stuff. So I'm over 60 seconds, but Amanda deserves a lot more than that. So that was a great pick. I mean, I hope you listen and blush in a little bit, but you are amazing, and we we appreciate you so much. So, she's good the one, best. good one, right? I like that. She's a great and one. Good, and you didn't really screw it up, Jeff. I mean, you went a little long. I would have gone way longer because I have way <laughs> nicer things to say about Amanda than you did. But I mean, you did like kind of okay. I I mean, you I know, it's a, you know, decent. It was yeah. it wasn't unbearable. Well, that, <laughs> that's it's good to know, I guess. Um, 
All right, let's talk about uh, something else that wasn't unbearable, and that was this episode. It was fantastic. <laughs> but that transition was, <laughs> was unbearable. unbearable. Okay. <laughs> but the ep- this episode was great. So so we had Bru- uh, Bruce Reicher on, and uh, Bruce is a, a veteran, 26 years education. Um, had a really, I, I was really glad I asked him about how he got to where he is, what he teaches now, because he teaches things like, a lot of media, so like you know, digital leadership. He does. He teaches around like Python coding, multimedia production. They have a TV uh, studio there. He does all kinds of really cool stuff that that 26 years ago wasn't really you know things that you would normally do. So he told us the backstory how he got there. And I really love these kind of two worlds of his life that came together and form everything that he has. And and something that I really noticed very quickly about Bruce, and I, I mentioned it several times. In the episode is like you can feel from the very start. His passion, his love for what he does, and you, it's no doubt like there's no even question about why he's still teaching after 26 years. I mean, he's so pumped to get back in there. Whether his kids are in person, digital, or something in between, he's he's just excited about it. And he was just a blast to talk about. He's got a new book out that that we talk about as well. May or may not be given a couple copies away later on in the episode. So listen to that. But uh, really enjoyable uh, conversation. Really appreciate Bruce. He did tell us that we didn't pick and fight enough, so I hope we've done uh, done well enough in this intro for Bruce to feel. Bruce, you let us know if we didn't do a good enough job. We'll, we'll make up for it. So, Ray, yeah, any, let me just say, Bruce, I want to I want to <laughs> publicly apologize for Jeff Gargas. Really, that's I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. You know why? You can't apologize enough. <laughs> you just stop trying. There's never going to be enough. But any, be, before we get in, right, anything you want to add on to that? I know I just blabbered on for five no, minutes. No, I just love Bruce, that but. Bruce is a Team Ray fan. I mean, he didn't say it, but I know it. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode with Bruce. <laughs> he didn't say it, but his actions say it. Exactly. All the time. He is a Team um, Ray fan. And with that nonsense, let's get into episode 209 with Bruce Reicher. All right, guys, I'm hitting pause on this episode only to make sure that you have all the details you need for our Mindset Meetup webinar series. Now, for those of you who have not yet registered, this is a six-week webinar series with all-star educators, guys like Trey Gamage and Dr. Valley Camille Jones and Kevin Butler and Pete and Joseph, Tracy Browder, and so many more. Now you do need to register at teachbetter.com slash mindset meetup to be a part of the live virtual event. But I want to make sure you had a special 50% off. Let me say it again, 50% off code. So here we go. It's easy. Teach better talk. All one word, no spaces. Use that to get 50% off of our mindset meetup webinar series over at teachbetter.com slash mindset meetup. All right, let's get back to this episode. All right, we are here and we are chatting with Bruce Reicher. And Bruce, it's awesome to have you on the podcast finally. We've been connected for a little while. I'm excited to, to chat with you. We're already laughing and having a good time before we hit record, so that's always a good sign. But I'm excited to, to chat with you. I want to talk about your book. I want to talk about your journey to get here. I want to talk about what's got you going on right now and just how you're dealing with everything in education and just learn more about your story. But before we get too far into all of that, how are you feeling right now? I'm doing great. I mean, in New Jersey, we haven't started yet. The teachers had PD last week. And tomorrow is actually the first day of school that I have kind of with students. I'm going into my school and I'm teaching remotely from my desk while there's also a split schedule going on in the school where students are coming in, but just for the core classes. So for language arts, math, social studies, and science, there is an AM and PM cohort so it's kind of cool, but kind of weird that I'll be in school, in my classroom, teaching remotely, but I won't have any students in my class. They'll all be on Zoom. So it's kind of like my 26th year, but I think everyone kind of feels like it's your first year too, that you don't know exactly what to expect because all my distance teaching has been done uh, from my house. I've, I haven't done anything from my classroom like that. So it will be an interesting experience and you know, go with the flow. And every single day I expect something different. And as long as I expect that, it will all be good. Well, I think that you'll be awesome, Bruce. I'm excited. We could talk literally the entire episode, I'm sure, about strategies for remote teaching and everything in between in terms of what your school has planned and what you have planned for students. Before we get into all that fun, 
Uh, would you mind just telling us a little about yourself so our listeners can get to know you a little bit? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm Bruce Reicher. I've been a educator for 26 years and I um, taught in elementary school, middle school, high school. Currently, I'm a middle school teacher in um, Upper Saddle River, New Jersey, which is northern Jersey, about 10 minutes from New York City. I teach sixth, seventh and eighth grade. And the subjects that I teach are digital leadership, coding, doing game, uh, creating your own game, creating your own app, uh, TV production, where we've built a TV studio in our school. And I wasn't supposed to be doing this until 2022, but I was also told four days ago, now I'm also going to be teaching passion projects this week, starting tomorrow. So I'm excited to be teaching that also. We have that uh, that elective on the board uh, for 2022 for me, but because some of the other teachers who were teaching that will now be teaching math, science, and social studies virtually. Um, I got put in to do that, and I'm really psyched to do passion projects. I've done little passion projects in my computer apps classes, but never for a whole marking period of 20 dedicated court, uh, classes uh, with eighth grade students. So anything uh, computer apps technology um, I've done. And I'm really excited where I am. I'm in a great uh, school district where they really support all the programs and they really supported the TV studio a lot to the point where we built a, you know, state of the art TV studio in a classroom. And then I teach in a computer lab, which is totally separate. Uh, So I'm very fortunate and lucky where I teach. And I can't, I can't wait to go back. And even if I have to see my students virtually, I'm sure I will still see a lot of students in the school as the day is going on, even though they won't be coming to my class tomorrow. Wow, that's awesome. Um, I, I love how how much excited and passion, excitement and passion you can hear in your voice as you talk about going into this with so many unknowns and so, so much difference. I love that you're that excited about it. I'm curious, so 26 years, um, you've taught a, few, a, a wide variety of things. How did you get into the, the stuff that you're in now, the coding, the, the TV production, all this media work that you do with your students now in these classes? You know, those weren't classes 26 years ago, right? When you started and, we, and probably for a while, but like how long have you been doing that? But how did you get there? Was that something that you were dabbling in on the side and that you just really liked and then they, you know, that just made sense? Or was it something that they said, hey, we want to get into this, who wants it? And you put the hand up and went for it. Or how did that all happen? Yeah, it started happening for me about age eight or nine, to tell you the truth. I was like a kid who would sleep with like a radio under my pillow, forget about these fancy things we have now, and listening to New York sports, whether it was the Yankees, Mets, Giants, Islanders, everybody. And it's not that comfortable with a little radio under your pillow, by the way. (laughs) But that's what I was listening to growing up, and my aspirations were to be a sportscaster. So I went to University of Hartford for undergrad and did all the sports there, and for a couple of years after school, did U- University of Massachusetts football and basketball games. And I had teaching was not even on the horizon for me. I had all my eggs in the basket of doing broadcasting until the AM station that I worked for started not doing well in like the early 90s, believe it or not, 1993. Um, so I came back to New Jersey and I temped for a couple of years just to, you know, make money and live with my parents. And then I said, I need to go back to school for something. And there was an ad in the Hartford Current, which is the newspaper in Connecticut. And it said, if you have your bachelor's degree, you can get into a master's program at University of New Haven. And we will place you almost like a permanent sub for 185 days. And you can get your master's for free. So I applied to the program. Lucky enough, I got in. I got placed in two elementary schools in East Hartford, Connecticut, taught every single subject in two K through sixes. And it was trimester. So you got your master's in 10 months. And I got my master's in elementary ed. And the first 10 years of my career, I taught in elementary school. And fast forward to when I moved back to New Jersey, I was in a school district as a computer teacher in an elementary school. There was an opening in a middle school. They were looking for someone to help do the TV studio. The TV studio was already up and running. And that's when my, you know, two worlds came together. And even though I hadn't really touched equipment in a while and the equipment, it would be way legacy now that I was using. It was like editing VHS tape to VHS tape to edit video. Um, you know, things had changed quickly, but I had kept up with the changes and the rest is history. From there, I've been in middle school, uh, kind of for like the past 18 years, uh, doing, you know, the computer apps job and TV production, you know, to be, to be a part of it. And, It is like riding a bike in a good way that I went to school for it. When you work at an AM radio station, if you've ever, you know, have friends that work at them, you end up doing every single job. So Mm -hmm. you know how to work all the boards, all the equipment, 
write commercials, record commercials, and I was doing pregame, halftime, postgame of shows, just about everything. Uh, so little do you know, it connects the dots, but that kind of set me up for what I do now that, you know, I have to teach all of those different jobs in a TV studio. And, you know, it's realistic because you need to know all of those things if you ever, you know, want to get into the business. And that's an aspiration that um, some people might have. Oh, man, I love how your two worlds just came back together like that. What a what an awesome story and journey and a way to pull from something in your past and bring it into this and just connect those two. That's really cool. So let's um, I want to I'm, I'm going to keep us off of not sort of off off of script, but I always like going this way because along the way through all of this that you had going on and all these different awesome uh, projects you had and different roles you've had, you also wrote a book. With a, with a couple of your colleagues, and the book's called, and correct me if I have it wrong, but it's Scripted, an Educator's Guide to Media in the Classroom. Can you kind of walk us through that? Um, how'd the book come about? What is it all about? Like, you know, the 1,000-foot view, who, who needs to pick it up? Sure. Well, the audience for the book is every single K-12 teacher that's out there, and now we are even get some interest from parents that are home remotely with their kids. I'm getting people contacting me. Could they use the book? to do lessons with their, you know, son or daughter at home? And the answer is a definite yes. Um, the story of the book is um, we all met on Twitter. Paula Needlinger, who is from Plymouth, Indiana, which is right by Notre Dame. I met her five years ago on Twitter. And you know how you're going through Twitter and you're seeing different people's names. And, you know, I'm always kind of looking for a teacher who is a media teacher. So I see this teacher has a TV station. Okay, I have that. But she also has a radio station. The kids produce movies, they do their website, they market the shows, and she's fully funded everything, having her kids go into town and write commercials for all the local businesses. Mm. So I'm like, that's somebody who I need to meet. So I met, you know, online by, you know, connecting and DMing and the whole thing. And the IBS uh, college radio station fair is in New York City. So I met her like uh, the year later. Um, And then she introduced me to Randy Tomes, who's the other author of the book, who's an elementary teacher in Indianapolis, who I'm most amazed at that he has kids K through six who are creating media in their school with a TV station and a radio station, and all the grades contribute to both of the shows. Um, So I met Paula five years ago, Randy, I met about three years ago. And honestly, this was never a bucket list thing or anything on the horizon for me. Uh, Paula asked me two years ago, you know, we looked and looked, all three of us, for a manual, for some type of recipe guide, kind of, of like that would fit for schools that was written by teachers and for teachers. And really, the only thing that we found were college textbooks, which were very well written, but from 2005 or 2010. And for media, that's, well, for any technology, 10 years old is just like very, very old quickly. Um, so we couldn't find anything. So we, you know, through doing Google Meets, we met for a whole year and we wrote the book and uh, we said, why, why can't we write it? We all have 20 plus years experience in the classroom. And, you know, this book is really firsthand from all of us. Um, I know a lot of excellent education books where they've gone and, you know, crowdsourced and they might go and find other media teachers. Um, our book really doesn't have that. It's all firsthand. These are lessons we've done, rubrics we've used, things we've created uh, with all students K through 12. Um, so we met for a full year. Uh, luckily enough, the book was done and then we pitched it to a bunch of different, um, uh, places that publish books for educators, uh, interviewed with some of them and we're happy we ended up with, uh, Dr. Sarah Thomas and EduMatch publishing and kind of the rest is history. We signed the contract last September and then, you know, it takes a while to go through all the editing and layout and all those different things and COVID in between too. (laughs) Um, so, you know, finally our book came out August 11th. And it really is a recipe guide for any teacher. And the premise of the book is really that everybody can create media. I think a lot of people, there is a little bit of a factor. Well, I'm not sure how to do all those fancy things. You know, we're here to tell you everybody could do it. And you don't need a budget at all, at least to start that today people are savvy enough with their phones, Chromebooks, whatever device you're using, um, that you don't have to start with a full blown radio station or TV studio you know, to start, that might be something you scale up to, but you basically start with, you know, what you have. And we're very budget conscious in the book that we have hardware software that is totally free that you could use to do this, um, along with some things that are also paid. Um, So that's, you know, the genesis of the book. And we're getting awesome feedback. And at this point, it's only been out since August 11th. 
I'm really psyched to see what do educators create with this. And when they give their students the tools to create a podcast, to create a public service announcement, whatever they're going to create, their curriculum should drive it first. Definitely the tool next, but I know I'm going to end up seeing a lot of things that we didn't even imagine, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people doing, and that's going to be, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's awesome. Uh, Congrats on the book, first off. And second, I appreciate you sharing that. It sounds awesome. Uh, It's really, really cool. It's going to be fun to see what, like you said, it's going to be really fun to watch the journey of of educators taking those things and and exploring and creating. So uh, so let's talk now. One of the things we talk about on this uh, podcast all the time is is the idea of failure and overcoming failure and learning from it. I always say that I'm fortunate enough to have failed a lot because I learned from all that. So can you take us on on a journey with you, uh, share a story with us of a time that you've had a failure in your career. How did you overcome that and what did you take away from it? I mean, I think the biggest failure that I've had is to try to go work in an office when I'm not a person who likes to work in a quiet office all day. I was between broadcasting and getting into teaching. I was temping for these um, pharmaceutical companies and, you know, the atmosphere was very, very quiet. In fact, the first job I had was like to proofread um, labels that went on the back of bottles and people would just sit quietly and for hours be proofreading everything. And it would go to, you know, 20 different people before it got approved to actually, you know, go on the bottle. And it was an excellent temp job, but it was like the biggest failure that it, it wasn't me. And it took me about a year and a half to figure out um, this isn't the place, you know, where I want to be. And the only thing, the only th- value a lot of people got out of those jobs was they would get hours of overtime and be able to work time and a half and maybe take a little bit more money, you know, home to their family. So I did something which, you know, I don't think maybe a lot of people do, but this came true is literally one day I just took a sheet of paper and said, I'm going to do these 20 things that, you know, I want to move back to Connecticut. I was in New Jersey at the time, go back to school for something, maybe get into teaching. I liked working with kids and I worked at camps and, you know, wrote a whole list of all these things that I was going to do. Um, so, you know, that was kind of a low point. I was off of having the dream job at 22, 23, traveling around the country doing sports casting, which is what I really wanted to do to being at home and then also, you know, temping, and there's nothing wrong at all with temping, but it was just really the atmosphere was super quiet, you know, not a lot going on. You know, the people were very nice that I work with, but, you know, 100, you know, 360 degrees different than what your day is like in the, in a school. Um, so I think that's like the low point. And luckily, I, you know, most of the things I put on that sheet came true and I was able to rebound from it and, you know, almost get a second passion after the sports casting to, you know, try teaching. And then I really enjoyed it. Well, Bruce, I love that you made that list of 20 things. I think all of us should have a list of 20, like, big, audacious goals. I like that. I might have to write down my 20 after this episode. Hopefully our listeners maybe take on that challenge as well of what do you want to go accomplish? It could be really, really big. It could be small, but something to work towards. I think that's awesome. And, you know, know, even even in the age of technology, there still is something about writing it down with like pen and paper or pencil and paper that you're just thinking through. And these are goals that you have or things that you might want to change. And I'm just saying that I'm lucky because I don't think it always comes to fruition that you're able to change everything so quickly. Um, But luckily, most of the things I put down that day, I was able to change and get into something where I was with people who it was a little bit more of an exciting environment. Absolutely. So obviously you shared a lot about your passions thus far, but you know, question four always has to do with what's keeping you excited about what's going on in education and what you do. So if you had to pinpoint something really getting you excited, maybe about this year or about the courses that you're teaching, what would that be for you? I mean, the most, ex- I think right now we are in the best time ever for professional development ever. Because you can go to so many conferences where you don't have to go any place. You could just click on the link and go virtually and be a part of GEG groups, listen to podcasts. There were tons of free conferences over the summer. Um, some I presented at, but a lot I just went to as an audience member. And, you know, Thomas Friedman's book of The World is Flat, I think it's a totally flat time now for PD in a good way, where for me, it's like a 24 hour ed camp. You know, I was going to actually go and, you know, with the book this summer, and I always went to a lot of ed camps in the summer. Maybe I would do four or five because you have to drive there an hour away, go to the ed camp, and then, you know, come back in a little bit of traffic. Um, I think I was on, 
I don't know, 15 different places where I went, whether they were conferences, podcasts, meeting other people. And none of that would have ever happened if I think it's commonplace now for everybody. It doesn't matter what the link is. Click on a link, do an audio podcast, do a video podcast. And if you ask me in the beginning of March, before March 16th, when COVID happened, in terms of school, I don't think anybody was comfortable getting a Zoom link and a password I might even ask what Zoom was like at the beginning of March, where I think now it's just, okay, just send me the link. I can meet with you. Either I've met tons of people on Facebook who are having problems with we video, say, doing end of the year projects. And I would say, well, you know, send me a link. Do you want me to look at it for 20 minutes and we can work through it together? And, you know, I've had amazing conversations like that from teachers from Iowa, California, Connecticut, you know, just finding people who needed help and saying, just send me the link. I could spend about 20 minutes with you and I could help you. And I think now is really the most fertile time ever for PD. And one of the things which I didn't expect to leverage at all, which was fantastic, was this global GEG where the teachers are from all around the world. Um, and you don't have to be, um, you know, up there and as a Google trainer innovator to be a part of it. And every Thursday, nine o'clock in the morning, at least Eastern time, they went through all the topics. So is your school in COVID? How's your school coping? How are you coping? Now your school's reopening, whatever the topic may be. It was like 90 minutes of just sitting in a Zoom room with 20 people from 10 different countries and really just talking education with them. And what everybody had in common was they were sitting at home instead of sitting in their classroom. And I think the two things that did is number one, everybody was home. So if you needed to reach somebody, you could. And I, the second thing for me is if I was in school, I would be teaching and most of the tools that I was using, in fact, I would guess to say all of them wouldn't even go through the filter at the beginning of March in my school. I'd have to go to the IT people, get permission, do a special talk, which is totally fine, you know, to go through those channels. But I think now it's so quick. You click on a link and then you're there. And I'm still amazed at the technology in the country and world that the audio and video quality, most of the time, you still have little glitches, uh, you know, works perfectly. So for me, I mean, that's the biggest thing I'm excited about now is now how can I take those things? Like I said, I'm in school, but I'm still remote. So what things could I leverage? And what I'm going to leverage is different relationships that I made the last six months to bring those people in as experts for Genius Hour or TV production or game design, because why wouldn't I? Everyone is out there. They want to help you. Um, I think all educators want to help each other. And I think people in general, if you you know are saying, oh, you're a game designer, I'm really interested in that. Would you come talk to my class? I think 99 out of 100 game designers are going to say, sure, just send me the link and I'll, I'll be able to do it. And I think that commonplace of how people connect, um, for me, this is the best time ever, you know, for PD. And there is no silver lining at all, you know, in COVID. But um, it's definitely an awesome outcome that, you know, this is a 24 hour ed camp for me. And I just have to keep my life in balance that you could be doing conferences every single hour of the day if you wanted to. I, I love it. That's such a such a great way to look at the, the situation that we've had and, and how, how to take away something positive from such a, a, a difficult time that we've had over the last six months or so is seeing that as this, uh, this such a, such an awesome time for professional development. I love the, just the stories you told there of, of the conversations you're having. Those are happening everywhere. I love that. That's, it's really, uh, just such a great outlook. And I, lo I love your outlook on just, on just everything, Bruce, and your, your passion, your attitude to it for what you do and what we, you know, what everyone gets, what we get to do every day. Uh, I think that's so, so needed and, and powerful to hear. So I appreciate that a whole lot. Let's, um, before we have, I want to get to the six questions, have some fun, but, uh, and we didn't talk about this earlier, but you mentioned it when you, when we first scheduled things and stuff that, uh, did you want to do a giveaway for the book? Uh, sure. We could do a giveaway for the book. That would be fantastic. All right. So, so it's, you know, anytime I come up with what people have to do in order to be entered in potentially win, Ray tells me it's a little too complicated. So <laughs> we need to find something very simple. So I have an idea, Ray, you can tell me, I'm thinking you just tweet out or let, let's go, let's do Twitter. Is, is Twitter your place, Bruce? Is that where you spend a lot of time? Twitter, Somewhere. Twitter is my main place. I also right, do so, Facebook, but mainly Twitter. That's okay, cool. So we'll do Twitter. You got to do t go on Twitter. Use hashtag Teach Better hashtag Teach Better Talk. And I just want to know. Tell Bruce and us what media, what uh, what new media projects are you are you thinking about doing? Are you excited about doing? Uh, and or maybe 
Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm gonna stick with that. I was yeah, about to just get stop there. It was good. I was about yeah. to get complicated. I stopped. Don't get complicated. I'm rolling, right? You know, I'm I think I, over right. Here. I think he was going. And can you also post a link to it and the video or audio, and then you will be eligible. <laughs> It'll be like 15 steps and then someone will be like, wait, did I miss a step? No, I won't answer. Guys, here's the deal. He gave you the prompt. You'll be fine. Use the hashtag teach better talk and you'll be entered to win. It'll be fabulous. And the other, the other thing you could add to it too is just at B Reicher, B R E I C H E R. And the, um, for the book, it's at scripted edu and the hashtag is scripted edu. So if, if you do at B Reicher and at scripted edu, that's perfect. They will go to all of our Twitter things and you don't have to post any video, any audio. We want your ideas and what idea have you done, which is, which is your best idea. I think that would be awesome. Ray, I want to note that I, I stopped myself. Bruce just made it harder. I'm just yeah, saying. He's I'm the just guest. saying. He's allowed. Bruce, he's allowed you're allowed. Wants, you're right. All right. We're going to have some fun, uh, Bruce. Let's, let's have some fun. We're going to do these next six questions. Your goal is to answer each one in just 15 seconds or less. You ready to roll? Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. Right. I have my timer. I actually think this first one might be the hardest one for you, but we'll see what happens here. Uh, what is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? So simple. We video. I have to record something, do a podcast, screencast, animated GIF, or meme. I'm going we video. Love it. Uh, give us a book you're reading right now. The book I, re- I actually reread it every year, The Energy Bus by John Gordon. Uh, who do we need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? Uh, every single day, I follow three people, and they're awesome. Don Goble, who is at Don Goble 2011, Joe Pizzo at Profess J Pizzo, and Kim Matina at the underscore tech underscore lady. And my favorite, I mean, all three like are my favorites. That Don Goble, you talk about awesome passion projects. He did a passion project. He did 35 shows in a row interviewing anybody who went to his high school and went through his high school program and any broadcaster in St. Louis also showed up to his own uh, podcast that he created called media makers. He ended up doing his passion project during COVID. He, and he's awesome. Uh, What's a good YouTube channel or website for educators? I mean, one of my favorite YouTube places, which you wouldn't maybe think as a YouTube channel is Wakelet. Because Wakelet does fantastic um, interviews. They had over the summer full weeks of, you know, community, everything. Didn't necessarily have to be Wakelet. It could be on any tool. And they're all up there. And that's also where I go, like, kind of for my asynchronous PD is I'll go to Wakelet. I know I can watch something quality on there. The interviews are great. And the content is great. Uh, give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. This this one is too easy. Twitter. If you're if you're not doing Twitter and you're an educator in 2020, 2021, it's okay that you're not doing it, but you're missing out on the best place ever for PD. And give us the best piece of advice you've ever received. Graduating University of New Haven in 1993 with a master's in elementary ed. Still remember the keynote. It was uh, Roger Mudd, who was like a CBS reporter. Very simple. Hard work breeds success. Mm. Boom. Nailed it. Done. Bruce, I have loved learning all about your story through education. Obviously, the book sounds incredible. I want to make sure that our listeners can stay connected to you. Hopefully, go check out the book and everything else that you're working on. Would you mind sharing how people can stay connected? Sure, definitely. I mean, the easiest way is Twitter, at B Reicher, B-R-E-I-C-H-E-R. And for the book, scriptededucators.com is the uh, website for the book. And on the website, we have a couple of cool things. We've actually partnered up with three companies, We Video, Wakelet, and also Backbone Radio. And we have separate websites for them that are on our site through scriptededucators.com. And the Wakelet site is very important to keep the book fresh and updated. That's where we're putting out new new um, links daily. And we're also thinking about having a folder there eventually. So whatever projects people create, they'll be able to kind of crowdsource them and put them on our Wakelet page. And I'm especially excited that the other two authors actually have radio stations in their schools. And I don't. But luckily enough, through Backbone Radio, we're going to have a radio station on the website. So it's not up and running yet, but we'll be able to broadcast 24 hours a day and cut in whenever we want with interviews, podcasts, whatever type of uh, audio media that we're going to create. So scriptededucators.com is where you can find all three of us. And at B Reicher is where you could find me on Twitter. And the one advice too I would give to teachers, and this was like one of the questions that was in there at one point, is don't be afraid not only to go on to Twitter, but then DM people who 
could possibly help you. Last year was the first year I taught digital leadership. I read Jennifer Cassatad's book, uh, Social Media. And, you know, as a flyer, I'm like, ah, oh, send her a DM. I'll, let me let her go over the outline I have for my class. I, I was shocked. She's like, yeah, just send it to me. I'll go through it. I'll leave comments on the Google Doc and send it back to you. And that's where I think educators really are helping educators. And if you DM someone and you're sincere about it, um, I think that's really like an underused tool that's right there for you and so easy to do. I love it. And, you know, you can find all the links, all the resources, everything we talked about in this episode over at teachbetter.com, as well as those really important uh, links for connecting with Bruce and, and the other co-authors and keeping these conversations going. So head over to show notes at teachbetter.com for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, really appreciate that as well. And let's keep take let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and share this podcast with them. Bruce, this was awesome, man. I'm so glad you were able to come on. Uh, so happy for you uh, and excited for you with the book and everything that's to come with that and all the exciting things that you guys have going on connected to the book. Sounds awesome. I uh, just really appreciate you coming and hanging out with us and giving us some of your time, man. Thank you. No, thank you so much. And I, I appreciate you. You kind of kept the fighting down a little bit between the two of you. I thought there might be a little <laughs> bit more, you know, banter going on. So thanks for giving me a chance to talk about the book and, you know, share a bunch of awesome ideas. And uh, thanks so much for having me. Don't worry, Bruce. We'll take care of a lot of that in the beginning of the episode. We want to get you the ability to shine right now. It's not about Jeff and I. I don't want to turn it up a notch. Like we're like we feel like we we slacked off this episode. Yeah, I can't wait to hear the open. <laughs> All right, I appreciate you. Until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better. Mm-hmm.